10 centimeters. I have another conversion lens, 20 centimeters focal length. An object, uh, I need to give you the distance between the two. So let's suppose that the distance between the two is whatever, 50 centimeters. So this is 10 centimeters, and this is 20 centimeters, F1, F2. We have an object 20 centimeters in front of the diverging lens here. So find the final position, the position of the final image. First, this object produces an image in the diverging lens. So I have 1 over F1, here's F1, is 1 over P plus 1 over Q. Now for the diverging lens, F is 10 centimeters, but it's diverging, so it's minus 10. So 1 over minus 10 is 1 over P, which is 20. We're told it's 20 centimeters plus 1 over Q. So this means that 1 over Q is minus 1 over 10, and then minus 1 over 20. So that's minus 20, that's 20, and that's minus 3. So Q is minus 20 over 3, minus 6.67. So the fact that it's minus means that Q is virtual. And it's an upright image because the magnification M is minus Q over P. So minus minus 6.667, so 6.67 over P, and P is 20. So it's one third. So the image is one third the object, it's, and it's upright. And if you draw it, it will be like this. So this goes from the focus, and then another ray going through the center continues like that. So now the point is that we know the distance. This is the image. It's a virtual image. We know its distance. It's 6.67 to the left. Since it's 50 here, it means from this lens now, the distance between the image and this lens is 56 point six seven centimeters. Now those rays arrive at the lens. They arrive seeming to come from the image A prime B prime. So this image that we calculated here acts as a real object for this converging lens. Why? Because rays arrive at the converging lens, their conversion Conversion rays or convergent rays, and they are coming from A prime B prime. So the image in the first lens acts as a real object. It's a virtual image in the first lens. It acts as a real object for the second lens. So now to find the final image, I have a real object in front of a converging lens. I know P is 56. 0.67. And I know, or it's 50 plus 6.67, which is 20 over 3. So if you want to write it as a fraction, it's 170 over 3. And we know F for the converging lens is 20 centimeters. For the converging lens, F is 20. So F is 20. The object is real, so P is positive. The lens is converging, so F is positive. So where is the image? I have 1 over Q is 1 over F minus 1 over P. So it's 1 over 20 minus 1 over P. So that's minus 3 over 170. So you get. 340 is a common factor. Then you get 17 minus 6. So that's 11 over 340. So Q is 340 
over 11 centimeters. So it's about, about 30, a little bit over 30 centimeters. So like 31 centimeters, approximately. So Q is 31 centimeters. We can get the magnification M. It's minus Q over P. So minus 340 over 11 divided by P, which is 170 over 3. So we end up with minus uh, 3 times 340 over 11 times 170. So it's minus 6 over 11. So we have the magnification. It's negative, which means that the image is inverted. Of course, Q is positive. That means that the image is real. So we end up with a, a real inverted image. And we know its size. And it, it's, it's minus 6 over 11 compared to this one. And we know its distance, 31. So I just moved 31 centimeters. I draw the size, which is 6 over 11 of this one. And it's a real inverted image. That's how those rays will refract. Anyway, so the point of this, this example and the previous one, is that when I combine two lenses, first you solve for the image in the first lens. This image in the first lens will act as an object for the second lens. It could be a real object, like in this case, or it could be a virtual object, like in the previous case. 